Welcome back to Grumpy Vet Garage. I'm Dino, the Grumpy Vet. And today I wanted to get back on my 2G Eclipse and show you the electric power steering conversion that I installed in the car. I previously had shown the, the power steering conversion in my intro video to this car, but I kind of want to be more in depth on it because I've been getting a few questions on what did I use, how did I do it. So today I want to go over what pump I used. Um, in this case, an S40 Volvo pump, uh, the fittings you're going to need, the general wiring that you're going to need to do, the lines and plumbing that you'll have to do in the certain lines you must use, and then mounting considerations. Um, so let's get to it. So now we're under the hood of my Eclipse, and you can see right here, this is where the normal power steering bracket and power steering pump, and then also reservoir and lines would run. Um, my attempt was to try to clean up this area to try to make it a cleaner install underneath the hood. Um, so I, I removed the pump from this area. But here is the S40 pump that I had shown in a previous video. And um, you don't have to relocate uh, your pump to the trunk. This is where I thought it would be the best. Um, I had a, uh, a viewer who um, messaged me about another place that they were thinking of uh, mounting it. I'll put the name of that, that viewer um, somewhere on the, on the screen. Um, and they mentioned uh, putting it under the, under the hood uh, where the battery goes. So on my vehicle, I relocated the battery to the back. Again, I was trying to kind of clean up the engine bay. And I placed the power steering pump back here as well. But I think it would it very well would be a good place to put it. Um, relocating the battery isn't too bad. You're running cables to the back. But when you're doing the power steering pump, you're also running hoses to the back. So here's my hose setup. So I have a 6AN uh, standard AN line as the return. It's a low pressure return, so you don't have to worry about the pressure. But on the power side, this is still an AN style hydraulic hose. They make power steering specific hoses, and that what th that's what this is. The fitting, let me see if I can get the camera moved around. The fitting is a stainless steel fitting. Um, now, the actual fittings that go into the pump right here, and I'll, before I forget, I'm going to leave all of the, uh, the part numbers for what I used in the description for you to see um, and where you can get it if you want to get it there. Um, this fitting is also steel and I would recommend steel, but in some cases it's hard to locate the steel fitting. And I think an aluminum fitting would work okay. I don't know about long term there, but absolutely you cannot use an AN, a standard AN that you would use for like a fuel line or a coolant line or an oil line on this pump. It has to be a high pressure hydraulic or power steering specific line um, but again there's the fittings and i utilize some of the drain uh some of the drain uh, holes there's plugs on the coops for where the sunroof would go if you have a sunroof you're very well utilizing these um, but i don't have a sunroof i'm actually got one of the few turbo eclipses that are actually not sunroof um you need this drain because this is the drain for uh, the edge here in your hatch. But these two weren't used. They were plugs. So I utilized them as grommets to run the hosing underneath. Um, but let me go back underneath the hood and, and show you the alternate location that the viewer had mentioned that I thought about too. But it very well could work for you. So normally the battery would go right here. Um, the intake with this elbow took up that real estate. So that was one of the main reasons that I wanted to move the battery. I had a, the same manufacturer that made the intake, the uh, JMF. They make a battery mount that goes low and utilizes a Odyssey. I can't remember the model um, battery that fits down there. But I decided to go ahead and move that to the back. But I could see... There is room here to put that power steering pump if you so chose. And the, the lines would be shorter to go from there to there because 
The biggest problem I see with my setup, not that it doesn't work because it definitely does, is routing the lines. My lines are very long. They run all the way to the back of the vehicle. I'll try to get a picture to show you how I mounted them underneath the vehicle. But to give you an idea, your fuel lines on, on an Eclipse run on this side under the frame rail. Granted, it's a unibody car. It's not truly a frame but there's a rail and that's where the fuel lines run. I util utilized that same area on the other side and used rib nuts, um, clamps, and then line separators, which I'll also link those line separators in the description if you choose to go that route, along with the rib nuts. Um, I tried to use common thread and size nuts that were already on the car, so I didn't want to go with something completely different thread fastener than what was already on the Eclipse, but I ran it down the inside of the frame rail all the way to the back and then over the subframe and then up through the drain uh, holes that I showed you previously in the back of the car. Moving on to mounting of the pump. Again, it's, it's really up to you and where you think you need to mount the pump, but I can show you the solution that I used. And I used it this way because I wanted to mount a battery as well. So you can see it's like two pieces of angle iron. So it's angle iron pieces. And I spaced them so that this battery tray would, would mount to it. Because there's mounting points for the battery tray underneath there. But also these mounting tabs that come on the bracket from uh from the volvo lined up to hit let me swing around to hit all the points on these pieces of angle iron so i was able to literally bolt this up no i'm sorry if i'm moving the camera around too much i'm trying to get you a good view no welding was required to get this pump, which already has rubber isolators from this bracket and then down to that bracket. I ended up using these uh, plastic spacers. I don't know long term how well that's going to work. Um, it's holding it very well right now, but longevity, I, I don't know if those are going to settle and cause the pump to become loose. I, I, don't, I don't think it will, but in this particular case, this is not welded to anything. And as far as these angle irons, there are factory bolt holes that are here. Um, that use, I'm not sure what the thread pitch is on this, but I, I can put it in uh, either on the screen or in the description. But I got a matching uh, nut insert, rib nut, that I actually put into the sheet metal to bolt this down. I would caution anybody from trying to hard weld anything onto this part of the car. Other parts of the car that are thicker maybe, but this sheet metal is relatively thin and easy to burn through. So I don't really recommend trying to, to weld to it. But again, this is a bolt hole, very secure to bolt into. This is also very secure and torqued down. I don't believe this is going to be going anywhere. You can kind of see it on the other side too. Bolt hole. And then I use that also to mount my circuit breaker. Um, but that's how I did the mounting. Very basic, I thought, but functional. Moving on to wiring. Um, again, you have to, the plugs are keyed so they can't be turned around. But it is a ground wire and a power wire this was the pigtail that came with it make sure if you're getting a pump that you of course take the wiring with it to make it easier for you to wire it up but i used eight gauge wire uh, ground that i ran a ground close to the batteries i could over here and then this i actually wired it directly to the positive terminal on the battery if you were to leave it up front um you would need to have some sort of positive power source up front. I have a stud underneath the hood that acts as the battery post underneath the hood. That's what you would need to run this to. These are, I had never seen um, fuses this large. I guess they're called maxi fuses, large blade maxi fuses. 
I used a 40 amp fuse. Um, you're going to want to fuse that wire. You're not going to want to run the cable directly to the battery without some sort of protective device. So use the fuse. Um, but that's the main power wiring. Now the, the harness, I have a Bruno steering kit, a control kit. Uh, it's, it's sold on eBay. Uh, the gentleman, I, I believe he's from Portugal, who sells controllers for this. There's two different kinds of controllers. I got the one that utilizes a potentiometer. I'm going to try to pan around to the car and see if you can see on the dash. Um, all the way down there on the dash, there's a, there's a potentiometer uh, knob. I'll go up there and show it to you up close. But that's how I control the speed of this pump. So it's an OEM for Volvo style harness that runs around and connects up to his controller. So I mounted the controller with some double-sided tape that's with Velcro so I could remove it and put it back. And then um, the wire is going forward. I actually used a Deutsch connector, which I'm thinking of probably doing a, a video to show everybody how to use Deutsch connectors. Um, quick plug for Deutsch connectors. If you're making connections and not using something like this, um, yeah, I, I would say you're doing it wrong. These are so easy and it's waterproof. I, I can't say enough. I, I probably wouldn't do a video to show people how easy it is to use a Deutsch connector. But the power wires and everything going forward run uh, underneath the uh, plastic, underneath the seat, and up to the dash, to the potentiometer um, knob. But if you don't want to use the controller, which I would recommend using it, um, the pump can run on a single wire so this is the oem plug that came with it and it's keyed to go this way so it's the forward one the gray wire gray with a blue stripe i believe that is the only wire you need to run this system um you need a 12 volt keyed source to energize that wire and it will turn on this pump it'll put the pump into what they call limp mode and in limp mode, I don't know what pressure you're getting, but for me, it seemed like too much pressure. Um, so that's why I went with the controller from uh, Bruno Steering. You're still going to need that 12-volt um, switch source to, to power this, to energize it and turn it on. Um, just in case you're wondering, uh, I don't think anybody has a functional... Uh, antenna motor anymore on a 2g eclipse maybe you do and if you do good for you um, mine was broken and i never replaced it and i deleted it but that motor does have a switched 12 volt source so that was the wire i used to energize this system so with that system energized it'll either turn on the controller which will then control the pump or energize through the single wire the gray and blue wire and turn the pump on. Um, let me go real quick and show you inside. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera too much. Show you inside the potentiometer. I like saying potentiometer. Um, and right there. This knob right here. If I want to increase my power steering feel, I turn it up. If I want to decrease this power steering feel, I turn it down. It's got a slight delay with the controller. So it's not going to be an immediate, like fast movement. You're not going to be able to sweep it back and forth and get any kind of movement. It's going to have a delay and a lag. Um, oh, I, I forgot to mention. So there are two controllers that Bruno Steering makes. The second control, I'm sorry, I'm shaking this camera ever. So there are two controllers that Bruno, Bruno, sorry, Bruno Steering makes for this pump. One being the one that has the knob, which is one I got, and there's another one that is GPS controlled. So as I understand, um, the faster you go, it increases pressure. That's how I read it. That doesn't really make any sense to me. It seems like the faster you go, the less pressure you're actually needing. Um, it seems like at lower speeds, is when you need more assistance. But again, it's all on their on their website, but also they sell through uh, eBay, which is how I got mine. I got mine through eBay. 
Um, but that is uh, my power steering setup. In case I forgot anything, so power steering pump, mounted, um, power steering fluid. I just use standard multi-vehicle power steering fluid. I did not stress over, do I use Volvo power steering fluid? Do I use Mitsubishi steering fluid? Am I right? I don't know. Uh, I might be wrong. Maybe I'm blowing the seals out in the rack and pinion. Maybe I'm destroying the seals in this pump. I, I did not lose sleep over it and just put the standard off the shelf at the local auto parts store, Prestone, power steering fluid, put it right in there and didn't think twice about it. So do, do what you think you should do for you, um, but that's what I did. So pump mounted, wired, lines, very important again, lines, the pressure line has to be a high pressure line, has to be. Um, you can run a... You can't run an AN, but if you did run an AN, it would probably work for a short period of time until it blew it apart. Um, I don't know the pressures we're seeing, but it's definitely not a couple hundred. It's more like a thousand or more, maybe even 2000. I'm not quite sure, but it's a lot. Um, so you have to use that. I'm going to uh, insert a picture of how I did some of the, the clamps, very similar to this, how I clamped them apart underneath the car. Uh, my controller there with the potentiometer and the fittings. Again, I'm going to leave all of the parts that I utilize to, to put this power steering pump together in the description with links to hopefully make it easier for you to put a kit together. Um, this, this same basic idea that I'm doing here would work on really any car. It doesn't have to be an Eclipse. It could be any car. You could do this on a Mustang, on a Camaro, on a on a Honda, whatever you want to do, as long as you can do the basic wiring and plumbing, you can have electric power steering. Um, but I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, this video. Um, trying to do more work on the Eclipse, I really want to, but I've already done so much. And with the Supra over there, I'm trying to get more involved in it. Um, but if you like this video, I hope you would uh, like this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you so choose. If you have any comments or anything about this or anything else on my channel, please leave a comment. Let me know like what could I have done better. Uh, what did I do wrong? Maybe that I don't even know I did wrong. Um, but yeah, please uh, please uh, engage with me if you if you so choose. But uh, thanks for visiting me in my garage and uh, have a good one.